Lizards are a group of reptiles that are incredibly varied. Some look almost mundane and very melodramatic, and some are wildly vibrant, extravagant, and some just plain weird looking. And I would probably venture to say that most people would agree that some of the weirdest looking lizards on the entire planet are legless lizards. And today I'm going to talk about a different species of legless lizard than probably most people are used to seeing, and that is the eastern glass lizard, or the eastern legless lizard. Now these lizards are found endemically here in the United States, mostly in the southeastern parts, basically from a good chunk of Florida all the way up into parts of Virginia. So a lot of that very southeastern part of the United States. Now these guys actually belong to a genus called Ophasaurus, and I'm pretty sure I pronounced that correctly for the first time ever, in which Latin it translates to basically snake lizard, which looking at it, there is a lot in that common. In fact, many of these guys, even familiar with different species of reptiles, do confuse them with snakes. And a big part of that is because they lack visible limbs. There are quite a few differences between them, the most obvious of which are their eyelids. Snakes, as a whole, lack eyelids. They don't actually have the ability to close their eyes. They have a scale that covers and protects their eyes that they entirely shed off. Lizards, most lizards, I should say, do have eyelids, as well as they have an external ear, that auditory meatus, which sits right behind, uh, right in the back of their head. Um, a lot of them also have kind of like this little indent that goes along the sides of their bodies, just to name several differences in between those two. So a lot of the times they're called glass lizards because they do have a propensity, a propensity to drop their tails. And supposedly, they drop their tails so much and in such a dynamic fashion, it's almost like glass breaking, like they grab the lizard and they drop their tail and it comes apart in multiple pieces, like glass breaking, so the glass lizard. They're a really cool species. They're actually surprisingly long, or I should say they can get surprisingly long, to where adults can actually get just over 40 inches. And so for if you're not too familiar with that, that basically means close to four, it's like three and a half ish feet long, which is very large considering we think of like the Sheltapus or the, the European legless lizard there, I got it eventually, the European legless lizard, um, as the largest species, which is certainly true, but these guys do get surprisingly long. Although over half of that total length is tail. They don't actually have very long, or even like the big three foot plus large long animals only about a foot or so of that is actual like body from head to vent essentially the rest all being tail they have really bright beautiful coloration to where for some reason a lot of subterranean and fossorial reptiles like the sunbeam snakes and uh the burring python and even some other lizards that are all very subterranean they all have very high iridescence for some reason and they have that really beautiful like oily black green and spotted coloration older individuals and older specimens tend to get a little bit duller um, and definitely have more of a green kind of muddy hue to them but they're still very cool looking lizards now these guys are often found in very moist humid swampy wetland areas most of the time and they're fairly common throughout their range, although there are some spots the further west you go and the further north you go to where they're not quite as common. But overall, they're a fairly common species to find in that particular habitat. Now in there, as with most lizards, but certainly not all, they're definitely insectivores where a good chunk of their diet consists of small insects, snails, and even supposedly some ground nesting bird eggs and even smaller mammals and lizards and things like that. And perhaps maybe even scarlet king snakes considering how small they are and their good chunk of their range consistently overlaps with that. Not a whole lot of data about these guys compared to some of the more common types of uh, lizards in the hobby or reptiles in general. There's actually well over a hundred species of legless lizards, but in the hobby, we don't really seem to have too many of them, or at least I personally have never seen, and I haven't seen a lot of information about them. In the hobby, I've only actually ever seen three different ones. The European legless lizard, the, the Eastern glass lizard that we're talking about right now, and then a Madagascan legless lizard that it was significantly smaller and also had a large amount of uh, iridescence and sheen to them. But either way, really cool species of lizard. They're not very common in the hobby, like I said, which is kind of odd because the one that obviously is in this video, which again was done filming at uh, my friend's place, where they have quite a variety of other different types of reptiles. And they also, in addition to having several of the larger European leg lizards, they had the glass lizard. 
And working with this one, as well as one of the other ones that I ever saw in the hobby, they were very calm, very chill. Supposedly this one would try to bite and flounder around a little bit more. He was just, I guess, really on his good behavior for filming that day. And honestly, all of the animals were uh, for filming this day, but they seemed very calm, which is surprising that they wouldn't be as popular as the other ones, considering they're native here in the United States. There's no ban on collecting them as far as I know, at least in Florida and parts of Alabama where they're found. Um, they seem very calm. And the European legless lizards definitely, and even mine as well, have a tendency to flail around more, they'll death roll, even they'll musk a lot, like my male musk a lot, my female death rolls and doesn't want to be held. Um, and supposedly they can also bite. I did have one for a short period before, there was like a little back and forth um, uh, where she was going to end up staying for a long time, eventually she was given to somebody who absolutely adores her, uh, but she would even try to bite me very often. This one doesn't seem to do as much. Um, certainly didn't while we were filming and then the other one that I was working with for a very short amount of time um, at a place out of state where they were very calm, they just kind of hung out a little bit. They acted like a very calm sedentary lizard where, which is weird considering that they're more likely to drop their tails but also have a calmer disposition it seems, or at least the several individuals that I have worked with, whereas the other ones are a lot more active they're larger but they also flail around and don't want to be handled with so yeah i don't know it's kind of a weird catch 22 with these guys but it's just really odd that out of legless lizards that do seem to be a certainly at least in the last year or two really gaining a lot a lot of popularity you don't see the glass lizards around very much that being said they do make pretty cool captives as a whole legless lizards don't make the best like show and tell pets um, some certainly can be more amicable and amiable to handling, but overall they don't really like to be messed with a whole lot. But being diurnal, both the European leg lizards and the Eastern glass lizard, they do make pretty good display pets being found um, in those kind of swampy wetland areas. A naturalistic bioactive setup for these guys would make a really cool presentation as far as the display species goes. They will actively, you know, seek out basking spots being that diurnal lizard, so they do need UVA and UVB lighting. Um, if you give them like the, you know, the half log tubes or the large cork bark tubes or even large sturdy low branches, they will take advantage of climbing on top of those. Not even for basking, just for climbing around. Not arboreal by any sense, which is just so silly considering how long of a tail they have. I'm not sure how much balance they really use it for. Um, sometimes some of just like the mysteries of how lizards evolve I suppose but they do make decent pets once you have a nice established habitat for them they're pretty easy to keep wide variety of calcium and vitamin dusted um, different invertebrates and again every occasionally maybe like some egg um, like they do seem to do very well on hard-boiled egg and scrambled eggs uh, maybe even like tiny little mouse pinks or something like that every so often Probably not super, super high in protein that you should probably avoid. Um, smaller doobie roaches and things like that would also make very good prey uh, diet staples for the glass lizard. Just a really cool species lizard that doesn't get talked a lot about and would be kind of cool just to see a little bit more often in the hobby. And it's just a fun little like oddball species that we, as the, at this point, I would like to think that everybody knows that I'm really into. So again, today, hopefully enjoy this video. Um, this was our, uh, my friend's uh, reptile. This is their, I think, I think they're officially being calling themselves Braden Exotics. They're still working on their logo and everything, at least by the time I'm recording this. I usually record these a little bit in advance um, and then schedule them out a little bit. Um, but again, as soon as they have all of their stuff squared away, I will retroactively go back and link all of their stuff so that way you can see a bunch of their really cool animals and all of their information and stuff like that for uh, their stuff because super, super appreciative of them uh, lending out their animals to ability to do these things. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in a bunch of other kind of cool oddball species, I don't normally talk about the more common ones. Um, I have a whole playlist species spotlight right here, at least I'll put it right here if I remember correctly. If not, it'll be the end of the video, um, regardless, that you can check out and it's well over 40 videos. I think it's, yeah, well over 40 videos at this point of all sorts of different uh, species, of lizard, of snake, of even a few different turtles and tortoises. So if you wanna check that playlist out, it also helps with my click through rate, which helps YouTube know that I exist, which helps me be able to do, to do what I would like to do, as well as hopefully giving you guys at least semi-entertaining, but at least very informative content. So again, 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.